First of all, I think there's an awful lot of opportunities. And uh, I don't know, with any opportunity also comes a challenge. Uh, uh, there's a, a challenge of, of getting yourself, uh, the, the getting uh, the, the broader environment, universities organized, tractly, um, really deal with these opportunities. So that's more of a resourcing game. And then, of course, as you become successful, uh, there's typically also challenges in the success itself, uh, because it's often regulated. It often needs a, uh, uh, if you like, a political blessing. Uh, so there's a challenge in bringing success to market, so to say. So I'd say there's a, there's plenty of opportunity. There's a challenge on the, if you like, the resourcing uh, side of it. And if you're successful, there's also a challenge on uh, on actually bringing stuff to market. Well, I think the the uh, I mean, if I can be talk about the science for a while, then then the the uh, the the speed by which it's moving right now it's just phenomenal. Um, I'm not really sure whether it's exponential. Uh, certainly, when you look at, for example, the cost of the of the of the mapping uh, genomes, it's uh, coming down very fast and actually more than exponential. Uh, that changes the game for a number of. Uh, companies, uh, people, scientists working in this space. Um, I believe that the sheer force of, uh, of, of that technology, the fact that you can actually map so much and you can screen so much, is going to outcompete the engineering part of it. I, I think the sheer force of, of diversity and, and, uh, and mapping of that diversity and screening is going to be, 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 be a very forceful uh, thing uh, and, and probably more forceful than engineering. They will of, often supplement each other, and often you'll have, uh, at least we do that often, we find results or get results uh, by virtue of the technologies I talked about, but then we'll, we'll, we'll fine-tune these results by doing some engineering on top of it. Um, so I think that the, the, the science is moving really fast, and it's, uh, I mean, th this industry, uh, uh, well, the biotech industry in, in, in its broader sense, and, and maybe a couple of other industries are the only ones where you can truly say that what you dreamt of just 18 months ago is possible today. And that, that is, uh, I think, so important when, when you work in this industry that you don't let yourself a limit by what was possible just a year ago, but you think about what might be possible in just a year's time. Uh, so a very fast evolution of, of technology, and uh, which of course calls for scientists to, I mean, their, if you like, their, their science goes old very fast. So you have to be involved in it and continue to move with, with, the, with the science. In the, in the industry itself, um, um, the, the, um, um, I think the impact of, of industrial biotechnology and biotechnology in general will grow larger. And like everything else that is successful, uh, it will get to compete with something else. Uh, it competes for the space. And when you compete, you should also be prepared for, I mean, people will come back at you and they'll question your technology, they'll try to limit the use of your particular technology, they will um, ask questions. That takes all kinds of different shapes or forms. Uh, often we talk about that as a regulatory process. And I think the regulatory process is actually getting more and more complex. Uh, so that, that's a trend that, 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 is, that we're watching out for, that it's becoming more complex. It, it's not necessarily becoming uh, if you like, better in the sense that it, it deals with more real issues, but I just think it's getting more complex. I think the, uh, um, my, my, my personal, uh, uh, very simple uh, uh, model is to do what you think is fun. Uh, I think if, if you, if, if, if what, what you do really drives you and, and you have passion for what you're doing, then in all likelihood, you'll also be good at it. Um, so I, I always try to encourage people in Novozymes and also other young people I meet in different settings 
to try not to engineer their career, but just follow, if you like, their gut feel about what's fun. Uh, and I believe the fun is fun to have fun in, in probably not the right word, but to have to, to, to be inspired by what you're doing and to, and to have that that wish to get to work in the morning and, and the passion for what you're doing is, is driving so much uh, that that um, that outbeats, I think, any any, if you like, planning. Now, then when you're a leader in the company, I'm trying to create that atmosphere. I'm trying to create that environment where people uh, follow their, if you like, what, they, what they're passionate about. Um, so we try to let people move around in the company. I've done that myself. Uh, um, I think when, when you look at what I'm doing today, then I'm at a stage in my life, if you like, where science is long gone. Uh, and I'm passionate about setting the right uh, teams to ensure that we as a company do what I talked about before, that we are on top of the science. We, we, I'm of course in a company, in a commercial organization, you need to do an awful lot of things right all the time. But, but having said that, you, you, have, you have clusters of things you're doing that are immensely important for your competitiveness. And in our case, the, 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 certainly the most important part of, of our ability to compete and, and, and to prosper as a company and create more opportunities in research and more opportunity for business development, that comes from the mere fact that we need to stay on top of the biotechnologies that we need for our business. So, so to, to create that atmosphere, to create that environment in a research organization is, is on the top of our mind. And I'm, I'm working to create that team that can do that. 